a very basic uh, grass-based model. Really, in a nutshell, we have a big solar panel here that we're collecting solar energy. Uh, it's producing protein and energy in forage form that we cannot utilize as human beings very efficiently. And running that through ruminant livestock, producing protein and energy in the form of primarily milk from here with a little bit of beef uh, that we can consume as humans. And we wanna do that with as few as steps <clears throat> through the process as we can, meaning the more that that cow can harvest her available feed herself, return her unused nutrients back to the ground as, as efficiently as possible, and we can harvest that milk uh, with as little labor as possible. We've been here for uh, for around 15 years or so. We we started milking here in the fall of 09. Uh, we moved some some bread or some open heifers here in 08 and started breeding them. We developed the dairy 08, 09 into 10. Um, we're originally my family's from Pennsylvania, and we we partnered with a retiring a retired dairyman and his wife from Wisconsin at the time who had a vision to develop a New Zealand style dairy model in the Delta South. And we wanna do that with as few as steps <clears throat> through the process as we can. Meaning the more that that cow can harvest her available feed herself, return her unused nutrients back to the ground as, as efficiently as possible, and we can harvest that milk uh, with as little labor as possible. It's really what we're trying to do here. Um, while having minimal investment in depreciable assets such as facilities and machinery and things like that. So we, we just try to line up our production season or our curve with what the cow's naturally gonna do at a time of year when forage quality is the highest and heat stress is the lowest. You cannot improve efficiency by adding steps. It never happens. If you add steps, you're not gonna become more efficient. You may produce more, but you're not gonna do it more efficiently. So we need to eliminate steps at every corner that we can. We're just trying to mimic the buffalo. Think about what the buffalo did. They never stopped moving. They never stopped moving. There was no set stalking with the buffalo herd. They were constantly on the move. The predators kept them constantly. So essentially the buffalo in most cases on the prairie were trampling or wasting more grass than they consumed as they moved. That did, that built the prairie we have today. So we're looking to, to mimic that as much as we can. We wanna have the highest impact per acre that we can have when we're in here for the shortest possible duration of time we can have it and then have the longest potential rest before we come back. That builds root mass, that builds soil organic matter, and then the rest start to go your way. Nutrient holding capability, water retention, everything starts to work for you. If I just simply keep moving cattle, I've accomplished 90% of my goal. Think about how simple that is. Just keep moving the cattle. Now, when you bring in, if you're gonna do that aggressively with poly wire and things like that, it's incredibly labor intensive. You know, we'd be out here spinning reels up, taking reels down, you know, if you wanna do that four times a day, this heat. But that's where the, that's where the virtual breaks comes in and we can move these cattle so many times with zero human involvement, zero labor we can maximize that, that forage intake. And then consequently that increase that rest period to be as long as possible. And that's where you get the root development. So the way the containment works, 
Um, as Ted can, you know, can attest, you simply draw a break where you want to contain the cows, you know, on the satellite image of, of your ranch. Um, there are two cues that keep those cows within that, that virtual break. There's an auditory cue. We have a speaker or a piezo on either side of the collar, um, sits right behind their ears. So the algorithm knows as it approaches the, the break, if the quickest way to turn that cow back into the break is to turn them to the right, we're going to tone them in the left ear. Um, if they continue out of the break, those tones get, get more frequent until it's a steady tone, kind of like backing your truck up into a parking spot. Um, if they then continue beyond that, there is a mild electric pulse. And when I say mild, it's 1% of what a, what a typical electric fence is, but it's really just to kind of reinforce the fact that, hey, you've gone beyond the, the solid tone, uh, get their attention. What we find is after a, a pretty quick training program, um, you know, we rarely, you know, most cattle don't get to the electric pulse. It's, it's really just the auditory cues that, uh, that keep them contained. Because the collars are not only controlling cattle, in our case, they're monitoring all activity, all grazing time, resting time, um, all heat activity, rumination time. And we have all that real time on our phones for every cow. And it's, the, the algorithm is, is measuring and monitoring when any of that rumination time would drop below what it should be. And it's gonna notify me that there's a cow that may potentially have an issue long before I see clinical sign. That's powerful technology. You know, there are different sensors within the collar and they're able to kind of, you know, kind of, you know, discriminate between resting, grazing, um, ruminating. Our grazing management is really pretty simple. We're just trying to move the cattle constantly. And one of the things that the collar allows us to do, instead of just two grazing events in a 24 hour day, now it's six or eight, which has done, you know, monumental things to the amount of time the forage is grazed and the time that it's rested. The bottleneck previous, well, prior was the labor. We couldn't, we, we, it would be great to do that, but we couldn't physically do it. So the collars let us do that. So our goal really has always been, and now the collars let us do that better, is really just keep the cattle moving, never stop it. But I think the big return is in forage utilization. You know, when you can slow the rotation down, all of a sudden you have more grass than what you what you had before. Because, you know, we talk about wasting grass, but yet we still can utilize it so much better when we can infinitely manage those break sizes and those grazing duration times. So what you're left with then is the end of the rotation, you have a lot more grass in front of you. Um, that equates to a lot more ability to, you know, to make more hay on site, those types of things, and that's, those are immediate dollar returns for us.